Hello everyone and welcome to today's session with Tara Fagan from Core Education and Vlad Finn from Mobile Republic. Um, today we're going to be learning about robots in the classroom. It's a very exciting idea for me uh, and I hope that everyone else enjoys it as well. First of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to all our sponsors and supporters. Without you, we wouldn't be here today. So big thank you to Learning Revolution and the Crew from Australia E-Series who have organised these um, webinars for us this weekend. A special thank you to Cyber Academy for sponsoring us and also to Coach Carol and Shambles Guru for their continued support throughout this whole journey. What I would like you to do is to show us where you are in the world. So if you use your little pointer, grab one of the icons and move it to where you are. So I'm just moving one to where I am in northern New South Wales. Great. And we'll probably get a few more people pop in soon, um, but we won't be able to see where they're from. Fantastic. Our little own um, Australia and New Zealand conference this morning. Okay, so that brings us to Tara and Vlad's presentation. Um, take it away, guys. It's all yours. Great. Thanks so much, Nick. And I'd like to also thank the sponsors for the conference. It's been a fabulous couple of days um, as I've popped in and out of events, and it's lovely to be able to have the opportunity to participate in a conference like this. So. Thank you. So yes, we're going to be looking at robots in the classroom today. I'll introduce myself. My name's Tara Fagan and I was the person from New Zealand that was sitting right there in Wellington on our map of the world. I am a facilitator with Core Education. So Core is a not-for-profit educational professional learning and research organisation. We're based in New Zealand, um, but we have facilitators right throughout the country. Um, I have been very involved working with schools, particularly around mobile devices and learning. And this year I'm particularly pleased to follow one of my passions, which is looking at programming, coding and robotics and education. And at the risk of showing my age, I have been a fan of programming for some time. Um, thinking back to my years as a teenager where we had a Commodore 64. And it was very exciting to have a computer in the home and of course to make it work you had to enter spreads of codes and really and invent games up. So while I didn't go into that direction when I started working, it's always been an interest of mine and it's exciting to see that time happening now for our children in education. I guess that's the, uh, the hand over to me. So, um uh, so my name is Vlad. I have been uh, working with the guys at Core Ed for about a year now. I was uh, in a project um, on uh, you know, doing some engineering work at um, in Christchurch when I met Derek from Core Ed, who introduced me to the, the amazing work that they're doing right across New Zealand with teachers, and uh, that uh, really sort of started our relationship. Our Mobile Republic was really set up to do. Um, uh, focus on products that had step changes in education and robotics and other things of, of the areas that we focus on uh, primarily. And so the work with Core Ed has just been a natural fit where across Australia and New Zealand we're focusing very much on just that step change in education uh, through really interesting technologies. So and that's why we're here today. <laughs> Right, so when I was growing up, I could only imagine a world of robots. For my children, however, it's a reality. Personalised robots are here now, they're available, and they're becoming more affordable as time goes on. And I believe that we'll see an explosion of these devices over the next few years, just simply because they're becoming more real, more affordable. And I think it's important for us to think that they're more than a toy. They actually create some real learning opportunities for our children. And that's some of the things that we're going to share with you today. So to start off with, I would like to introduce you to Romo. Romo is a personal robot, and we'll meet more of Romo during the middle part of our presentation. I first became aware of Romo um, as a personal robotic device 
back when the company was starting out and they were calling for, for funds to help them start out. Um, and they also had a TED Talk going on. Uh, they, they appeared on TED, and I've just put the link into the box for the TED Talk where they're talking about Romo and what it can do. They wanted to make personal robotics affordable for everyone. So we'll make more about Romo later, but first we'll consider why robots, robotics and programming and education. And then we'll look at how these devices will help support learning in our classrooms. And during our examples, we use Romo to demonstrate how these concepts work before concluding with what personal robotics have to offer. Feel free as we go through to ask questions in the chat box. We also have allowed some time at the end uh, for any questions and for discussion as well. So just why, why are we starting to look at programming, coding and robotics in education? Well, I'm sure I'm talking to the converted here that know about the digital world that we are living in. So the fact that ubiquitous learning, mobile learning devices means that we can learn anywhere at any time. And countries are starting to adopt coding and robotics as part of the educational curriculum simply because we need to understand more about the way that these tools work. Because as we live in this technological age, our tools from the computers we use to our fridges, to the way that we work, all this is starting to depend more and more on the technology that we use. And it's useful for us to have some understanding about how these programs work, how coding works, and how these devices actually work. doesn't mean that we're all going to become coders or programmers because of them, but it gives us an idea and understanding of how they work. I also believe it provides a new avenue for children to learn, and particularly children who are disengaged from the learning process Hands-on learning gives them that opportunity to be able to engage in, engage in learning, the learning process in new ways. If we're wanting to teach children how to think rather than to provide them with information, so really transforming the way education is at the moment, it's about cognitive flexibility. And it's a, that's going to be an increasing part of the way our classrooms will be changing. So it's looking at different things about how children combine concepts, about how they adapt to unfamiliar or unexpected situations. Because the way our world is changing, it's changing to a degree that we're constantly coming up with new ways of working, new ways of being. So it's being able to adapt and take risks. It's about modifying the knowledge that we have, modifying familiar knowledge. It's about that taking a concept, adding to it, remeshing, creating new ways of being and it's about producing novel representations. So, you know, this offers the cognitive flexibility that we need to be able to change the way that we teach and work with children. It's also about giving children agency. And I'll just put a link in, if you want to know more, to one of the course 10 trends on agency. I'll just put that in now, and you can see it at the bottom of the slide as well. And it's about learning activities needing to involve agency. So where the learning involves activity and the initiative of the learner, where it's about learners moving away from being passive recipients to being more active in the learning process. And when they're more actively involved about the decisions in the learning, they have greater agency and have more understanding about just how the learning can happen and how they can make the learning fit for them. And you can see in this slide here, this is a picture from several years ago of children who were learning about spiders. So these are kindergarten age children. Rather than bring the spider into the centre for them, they've taken their computer and a digital microscope, which a middle child's holding, out to look at the spider in the natural environment. So that they're learning, they're making the choices about how they want to learn. They're being active and they're learning themselves and they're using that natural environment with some technology tools to go out and explore and create their own learning. There's also a movement around the world to STEM technology, so really focusing on those science, technology, engineering and math, bringing them into education, obviously with literacy underpinning all these concepts. And there's a, it, it, because we know our workforce is going to uh, involve a lot of these skills, we need to start moving them through into education and have a greater focus on them. And as I said, this is happening around the world, and even New Zealand's looking at this with our ministers, Joyce and Parata, 
talking about how in a parliamentary release that they're forming a committee to look more at how they can involve these STEM skills to young people, not only to meet the needs of our society today, but also to plan through for the future. So let's have a little bit more about ro robots. Using Romo to have a look at how that can help support cognitive flexibility in the principles of STEM. So first of all, how does Ro Romo work? Well, you can see that at the bottom image there is a base. So Romo works using an iOS device, an iPhone or an iPod Touch that you put onto the Romo base to be able to control and operate it. So you buy the base and obviously you've got your iPod or iPhone there to control it. So it sits on, you download an app from the App Store, and that's what helps Romo work when he's with his face. So that's how that works. At its very foremost function, um, Romo is a remote controlled toy, if you like, um, where you can drive it around using your iPad, your computer, or another, I guess another iPhone or iPod touch to be able to control it and move it around. It does have one feature which is a telepresence, so it can be remote controlled from anywhere in the world with one of those devices. So, for example, if I was overseas, um, my children were at home, I could tap in and drive Romo around for them and, and talk to them. That's just one of the features that it has. There is opportunity for that in the classroom, but actually let's look at what else Romo has to offer us for learning. So here's Romo. This is how Romo starts off when he's first connected to his base and you download the app. Romo comes with a story. He's a robot from outer space and he needs help to train for the space race. And each of these missions helps Romo to prepare for the race. And each mission builds on levels. So it starts out with a very easy level, which we'll show you shortly, and then the complexity builds on. Each level introducing programming concepts to children without actually talking about programming concepts. It's building and it's getting familiarity with how they work all the while while we're having fun because that is quite a fun device to be able to use. So this is the first mission. So we've come from outer space. We've, we've learned a little bit about Romo through the app that we've introduced. And the very first thing he wants you to do is to help him drive. So we've got one command that you can see there at the bottom, the driving forward. So we need to just slide that, Romo compiles the mission, and when he's on the space, Romo drives forward. And you see instantly the results of the programming that you've done. So it's just one at this very simple level, just the command to drive forward, you put that into place, and Romo compiles the command, and off he drives forward. And it's really great when you see children use this for the first time, because suddenly something that they've done has made this object move by itself. And, you know, there's a huge amount of excitement with that. With Romo, every time you do something, you get a star rating. So, you know, here, three stars is the most that you can get, um, and that's great. So you get the three stars. If you get from one to three, Romo still drives forward. So, you know, he'll still drive forward. You still get one star. But children aren't prevented from moving on. They can move on and return to this level at any stage. And it's a great way... Um, Often for children, you know, they get their excitement built up. They might only get two stars, but they return later on to try and get that third star and make Romo drive faster or forward. As we go through, the missions get more complicated and you'll get to, to see why this becomes so more, more important. But the star rating's great. It provides children with a sense of achievement, and particularly when they see the robot move forward themselves. So as we move on, we're still in the very first set of missions, but this is the seventh stage of the first mission. And Romo wants you to teach him to drive in a square. So you get the two, he gives you two simple things that you've got to be able to drive forward and turn right. But obviously there's more to a square than just those two commands. So what children are learning here is how to sequence those commands so that Romo is forming a perfect square. And that's not as easy as it sounds. So you've got to be able to go into the drive forward. You can change the speed, how far the robot drives forward, and then with the angle, you can change the angle of, of the, the turn as well. So it requires a bit of thinking at this level, and this is one of the first times up until about this mission, it's building in complexity, but this is the first one that really gets children to start to have to think. And when they're working together, you know, that whole collaboration really comes alive as children sit down and design, 
start planning how they can get it to go. And often it's one of those ones that doesn't work out first time around. So they go back and think, right, what, to, what can we change? What can we do that's slightly different? So you can see too, in this one, there's connections across the curriculum. I mean, obviously with literacy, cognitive, science and maths, but particularly with maths when we start to look at those angles. And you can see here, in this one, when you're thinking about how do you get Romo to turn, you've got to think about how, how, how far, what's the angle, what's the diameter. So it's putting some of those concepts that we're learning about into action, into real life. And my experience has been that children who don't always grasp the concept, particularly when you're talking about this type of math, manage to do it here because they don't feel it's doing maths as such, they're using a robot and, and having fun with it. And when you have children sitting down with this sort of technology, they're getting really excited about what they're doing. So you can see here, as the user develops experience with Romo and moves through those missions, the complexity of what we're doing is building. It's requiring children to look at the problem as a whole to decide what code they're going to use and in what order. So they've got a few options there, but how do they get this to move? So Romo gives them a task to complete and says, I think this one, for example, might be that Romo wants to learn to dance and he wants to learn how to do a tango. So first of all, children obviously need to know what a tango is, so if they don't know, they need to look that up. But then they've got to put all these bits of code together to be able to work out exactly how you get the robot to do a tango. And so they collaborate together, they plan out their design, and they approach it, putting bits of code together. And just like with the square, where we've got Romo working in a square, it doesn't always go straight forward. And the great thing is the code's there in place, so you just need to work out which bits you're going to move around to gain success with getting Romo to, in this case, do the tango. So just at this point, I'm going to stop for a moment and just see if we've got any questions so far. I'll just turn my mic off. So feel free to ask questions using the mic. What does the robot do when you say tilt? Is that just the, the stand where the phone is just moves or what? So I just missed the first part of that question. What happens when you've got tilt? What does the robot do for tilt? I, I got the, the second part, but I just missed the, the first part. So could you repeat that for me, please? What do you do when it says tilt? What does the robot actually do? Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't, didn't get that first part. So when the robot tilts, he's moving backwards and forwards on the screen. So not only his face is still, but the robot tilts backwards and forwards. So it rotates on an angle backwards and forwards at that point. So is that clear? Does that answer the question for you? Thank you. Yep, that's excellent. Great, thanks. So yes, I forgot that there's a variety of commands that are in there. And as I said, as you work through Romo, different commands get offered. So you start with the drive forward, and I think the next one's drive backwards, and then you get the commands like the turn, the tilt. And as you work through these, you also open up new ways in which um, Romo can be created. So you can personalise it. So you get something called the lab, which is then what you can create your own commands. So what happens when you poke Romo in the face? What would you like him to do? Would you like him to get angry? Would you like him to get excited? So you can personalise it that way. You can also, um, there's a whole range of ways which you can do it. What happens when Romo's picked up? Um, Romo learns to backfire and do different things like that. So you're really getting some fun elements come into it as well. And then what opportunities do robotics offer for education. How can we use them in the classroom, which is the main point of this presentation. We've used Romo um, as an example to show how, how some of these concepts can be used. But let's have a look at what really happens. And thanks, Vlad, I can see that you've put in about the angles to raise and drop the face. So that's great. And yes, it is real fun learning. I mean, kids just have so much fun with this. And it just, I mean, 
mobile devices and that do offer lots of education, but there's also something about when you put robotics down. So one of the main ways is experiential learning. So it's learning by doing rather than learning by rote. It's learning through using real-world tools, and robotics are becoming part of our real-world tools. It provides us with an object to think with, so we can program the device, we can put it on the ground, and then watch to see how well our coding worked. And it really is ideal for children who like to learn through doing, and I can't stress that enough, the excitement that happens when you bring this robot into the classroom, and generally there is only one robot in classrooms who are abused, and sometimes we've had two or three, but it's about children working in small groups together, having them in programming and talking about what they can do. And there is a lot of fun happening in, in, in that learning. It's about offering new ways of being creative. So as users work through the mission, the new upgrades and the activities are unlocked, like the labs that I talked about before, where you can choose how you'd like Romo to react when certain things happen. You know, you're coding it for yourself and inventing the programming yourself and personalising it so that not one robot is the same. It's also about being creative in new ways, so children being just able to have different tools to explore their creativity. Just like some of us love to paint, others like to be able to use technology to create. It just adds another element to the curriculum that we offer in schools. Robotics offer us the opportunity to problem solve and have critical, develop our critical thinking skills by looking at a problem and determining what the most logical, efficient solution will be. So it's skills that we need to be able to solve problems, looking at being responsive to information and not just accepting it questioning what we're doing, talking problems through, looking at how we're offering the learning, looking at, I guess, possible solutions for what happens. And in the case of Romo, it's about solving the mission by sequencing the code in the correct order and looking at how it works through. And it, you know, it just provides a different way of offering these skills to your classroom for the, the learners of our today. We know good learning comes from making our mistakes, and I think that this is one thing with the robot that does. It provides a safe environment, a fun environment where we control an error. What happens if you put this code in the wrong order? Let's just say, and let's try cause and effect. That, you know, if I do this, then this happens. What happens when we just put things slightly out of order? And if it doesn't work, so let's go back and try again. And because it's done in such a fun way, children really do enjoy exploring with this one they get the opportunity to try. And you, I'll find that children who, who really don't stay long at task for, for different reasons do spend a long time with Romo persevering, trying to get it working the way that they'd like to, or trying those personalised features that they like in terms of the lab. And yes, it is about perseverance and resilience, which I've started talking about. It's those dispositions that we're wanting to encourage in our children that they keep trying, that they keep working at things, that they build resiliency as they try different sequences, different positions, and different coding patterns. And they return again and again to those levels, that, that star rating, if you like. So if they've moved on and they've only got that one star, first of all, all and they've gone through perhaps one of the missions, they go back and they try and they think, right, we've only got one star here. Let's see if we can do this again and, and build up our expertise at this. And they just really do um, seek and joy. I guess it's the fun element of this and the playful element of it that keeps children returning and returning again to these devices. And this is the other part, you know, this whole being able to design yourself. So mapping out and planning where the learning is going to go. You know, children do, you see them sit and draw. If, if I've got to do a square, this is what it might look like. Or, you know, it's planning some of the future missions, um, you can design, you can get Romo to be able to chase after certain coloured elements or chase balls. So, you know, it's designing uh, routes for him to run around and I guess, if you like. So it's planning it out. And sometimes it's planning on paper, it's planning through talking, but it's that whole design of how something might work. How can you design it for Romo? And that whole maker culture, you know, the emphasis on learning through doing in a social environment. 
um, that peer led, that cheer led learning that's motivated by fun, by fun and self fulfillment. You know, you're making something and creating it simply for you. And that maker culture that's becoming an increasingly part of our society is seen as having the potential to contribute to a participatory approach, creating your own personalised learning and new pathways into topics that gives opportunities for learners that are more real, relevant and designed for them. They can design their own learning. And I love this quote from Martinez and Steger about that children should engage in tinkering and making because they're powerful ways to learn. And I think that that's really important. That's one thing that robotics offers us in education. It's part of that maker movement. It's part of using technology in education in new ways. It's part of bringing that programming and coding so that we understand those basic concepts together. And just before we move into a question and discussion time, I just wanted to point out that, you know, robotics in itself isn't going to make a difference to the way we teach, to the way our children learn. It's about us and what we do with it and thinking about how we're going to implement these devices in our classroom. They are fun in themselves, which is great. You know, the whole remote control aspect is good. The programming is great, but it's about how we use it in our classroom and how we can use that as a building step for the rest of our curriculum and how can we blend it so that it's not just something novel that's coming in, but it is part of our learning program. So on that point, I'm going to switch off my microphone and it would be great to have a discussion about whether you see robotics as part of our curriculum um, and also any questions that you have. So please feel free to take either the mic or use the chat box. Uh, yeah, I, I come from an industrial uh, background, Tara, with uh, 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 power station work and we had simulators and stuff like this was for training adults and the critical thing was that you had to use the tools uh, to get your message across. So your point about uh, using the robot to uh, to explain specific things and, or, and get people to learn it uh, in the classroom I think is a very valid one. I mean if you're trying to teach maths and angles uh, then the robot would be great for that sort of thing where the kids had to put in the exact angles to be able to move from this point and around that obstacle and get to somewhere else. So yeah, that, that's a good idea. Otherwise they just become a toy uh, to play with. Thanks Keith. Um, yeah, I agree. We've got to be careful that they don't become toys, that they are actually something that we use in real life, in real situations and you know, your, your background obviously you've seen it working really well in terms of um, that, but I agree, you know, it is more than just a toy, we've got to look at it. So it is planning out, you know, reinforcing that concept, looking at literacy. Sometimes you won't get children necessarily to engage with reading, but if you are reading from a screen or even if it's reading comics or something, they're engaging in literacy in other ways. So, you know, it's not going to be a full curriculum thing on its own, but it's looking at how it can add to your curriculum. We're finding the eyes of light here. Uh, we're finding also um, while working with um, educators for autistic children that um, because Romo allows for specific programming and so forth, those children who've got uh, you know autism or even that spectrum actually find a lot of value from learning social skills, you know, facial expressions and so forth, because Romo is very much about the face of the interaction. Um, they're getting a lot of value out of that as well. And um, maybe later on I might be able to post some links to some of that information. It's only really just starting. But uh, yeah, with uh, autism it's having some very interesting results. What sort of cost are we talking about for one of these robots? So uh, I can answer that. Uh, so the Romos in Australia and New Zealand, uh, Australian retail 229 and 249 in New Zealand. Uh, I'll, oh, thanks Tara. Tara's just posted the, the link. The New Zealand link, we had some issues with it, so it's pointing to the Australian site, but that's fine. The, um, there's a, I'll, I'll put a code in here. So for all of the people that are working with Core Ed, 
um, if you put in the core ed code when uh, at the purchase piece, it immediately gives you significant discount. So um, that it's the base. You, re you still require uh, an iDevice of some sort, an iPod or an iPhone, either a fourth or fifth generation. So there are, um, you know, robotics we found it was quite expensive. There are a lot of different uh, products out there that try and teach children robotics. What we really loved with the Stroma was that it allows at home and at school play, so it really transitions because it's on the device and a lot of children particularly um, have iPods and schools are becoming much more iDevice friendly um, and obviously in the future they'll be uh, where they, they're working on um, Android devices, but the one that's not in my life. So yeah, so it's accessible, though um, it requires that additional piece of technology, which a lot of schools are starting to in, get involved with, so by devices. Just uh, while we've got some, uh, some quiet time, uh, there's also uh, a number of schools that are uh, starting to look at these. So Tara can maybe comment on a school in New Zealand. And um, I'll put in a link in just a minute to a video from the remote guys in the US to a school uh, that's implemented there. So it's it's very it's a, it's a flash video, you know, it's one that's a flashy video, one that's been produced. But um, Tara can maybe talk about uh, the school in New Zealand that's taken them on and we're looking at uh, a program across Australia in gateways trialing that. So we're, we're excited that schools see the benefits and uh, as we work through uh, supporting the schools to implement it, we'll have more and more case studies come on. So I'll just pop into the into the chat uh, a link to the video which is the US based one, um, but we haven't de developed uh, an Australian New Zealand one as yet. Great, thanks Kate, and I've got that link in just while you were talking to the White Rock School in America that are using them. I mean, this is really early days in terms of robotics in classrooms. I mean, I know we've had the Lego Mindstorm and the different types of robotics in terms of that. I think, however, the difference for this is that these are more personalised, you can customise them yourself, and they're becoming increasingly affordable. So in New Zealand, we've had a couple of schools that have bought in a couple of the devices, one board and four, and the other I think has two devices in there. So it's early days in how they've been used. What they are doing is, what I was talking about before, is noticing that children who are reluctant learners or who like learning by doing rather than sitting in a classroom are using them to engage in the learning process. So obviously um, math is part of what they're offering, but they're offered as a fun element too. So as these devices become more commonplace and as the schools will gain more experience with them, we'll have more ways or more examples to share with you about how they've been used. But at this stage, the feedback is certainly that they are engaging, they're providing excitement, and they're just providing new ways, I guess, of thinking about that whole programming and coding in the classroom rather than actually using computers. It's giving children a base, and it's a base where teachers don't need to understand the, the, you know, how do you write coding and how do you bring that into the younger curriculum. So it's just giving them the tools through pictures and through a guided way of doing it. But we, as I said, you know, it's early days and I think the uh, future of where this can go is very, very exciting. Um, and we look forward to bringing more updates at next year's Aussie Live in terms of showing you some real classroom examples from our part of the world. So any other questions yet? I'll just turn off my mic, but feel free to either grab the mic or use the comment box. Thanks. Providing a recent response as well regarding incursions, uh, I'm just going to say that our focus is very much on uh, providing the, the the information and support to the schools that look into uh, you know deliver Romos and deliver the STEM content using the Romos. So. Uh, we will have incursions later in the year, uh, but at the moment we're thinking that uh, our thinking is to support the schools to get the teachers really excited about it and seeing the benefits in their classroom and uh, 
at the moment that's where the focus is. And the feedback seems to be positive that way a lot of the schools would rather initially have their um, their teachers empowered to, to teach that and use that during maybe uh, the breaks, after school care and that sort of thing. So and other school programs they get a lot of to, to deliver a lot of value from uh, from the one um, technology. So you don't have one uh, for Android phones, or not yet? So the development environments that uh, Remotive have focused on is the I environments, you know, Apple iOS, and the reason being is that it is uh, a lot easier to get right across the you know that platform with uh, uh, with the programming. With the Android, there's so many different uh, things to look out for, but that's coming. I think this year is there. Um, their timeline for, for releasing an Android. But don't quote me, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, Just wondering if there are any other questions at the moment. And just see Joe's typing into the chat, so we'll just give her a moment. Three, if that's the case, and if not, um, we'll finish up. Just see what's in the chat box. No, nothing else has come through. So look, I we'll both be around in the room for the next ten minutes. So please feel free to, to stay and ask us questions if you'd like to. Um, I will bring up our link. There's the link to myself if you've got any questions, and I'll just bring up the link to Blair at the same time. So feel free to contact either of us if you have any questions. I'm a, a teacher and educator and I work with teachers so I can probably answer some of the educational uh, background that you would like um, and Vlad will be able to answer some of the technical components that you like um, in terms of Romo. So feel free to contact either of us um, and as I said we'll be in the room for the next 10 minutes or so if you'd like to stay around and ask any questions. Um, just to finish off I would like to thank you all for your attendance which has been fantastic. Thank you so much especially with a topic that's so new, such as robots in the classroom. Um, yeah, and thank you to Aussie Live for hosting us. Thanks very much. Kia ora. And Tara, thank you for presenting. That was great. Uh, and thanks everyone for your questions. Yes, it's, uh, thank you very much for, for both of you for uh, for providing this presentation. Um, uh, I, I just harking back again to my experience with uh, industrial training, um, a lot of it depended on the instructor and, and in the classroom a lot of it depends on the teacher and in reality a robot is no different to a computer or a whiteboard or a marker or an overhead projector or any of those things. They're really tools uh, to help the uh, to help the teacher get on with their craft and so it's up to the teacher really to, to figure out which tool to use and, and how to use it to address those things. So I can certainly see um, the robots as, uh, as being an important tool uh, to get across messages to people but it's really up to the teachers to use it and there's many teachers that I gather don't seem to use the, uh, the computer systems, the smart boards and everything that are in their classrooms now. Yeah, look, I agree. It's, you know, it's about teachers' choice about what providing the tools, I guess, for the learners to be able to choose what suits them best and looking at how they're being used. And I agree, I think having technology just for the sake of having it in the classroom isn't always the best way, you know. It's like that West School quote says, it's about us and how we, what we use it for, that'll be the way that learning's enhanced. So thanks again for the comments. Alfred, did you want to take the mic at all? So uh, just um, a click, single click your talk button if you do. Um, yes, I was really interested when you said about um, how they could be used particularly with autistic children and you said you had some links for that. Um, I'd be very interested in that. I have a, an information service for teachers, parents, etc. of gifted students and that often includes 
uh, twice exceptional students that are on the autism spectrum. And um, you also mentioned gateways, and I wondered whether, whether that was um, something that they were going to be doing in the schools, or whether that was their, you know, for instance, holiday program type things. Thank you. Well, thanks, Joe. Yeah, um, the the thing with the autistic children at the moment is uh, working with a company that develops products for autistic children, and we're looking at how to program the Romo to make uh, the learning, um, you know, beneficial. So. The, I will send some links through as, as we develop them. So maybe what I might do is you've got my email. If you could just email me and I'll keep you on the loop, that will be probably the easiest thing um, because it's in development. It's right now we're just meeting with the, um, the people that are uh, uh, the experts for training, you know, so that was those who will do, help design what needs to do what and when um, in the, in the uh, in the autistic focus classroom, I guess you could say. There's, it's really the, the group, uh, I don't have enough information about it right now, but uh, there are groups that sort of come together and help each other with the you know, support groups, but also education groups, um, that we're interested in using this. And the people that we're working with are positioning and demonstrating Romo for what specific needs they have and how it can be programmed to deliver those. So it's a little bit early days, but I'll just send you some information as it comes through. Um, the other one around Gateway, so it's really early days right now. There's a, uh, we're doing a trial program in, a, in, a, in about a month or two uh, in a classroom in one of the Gangways programs, which is so exciting. I just, uh, you know, even uh, I have sort of fallen over myself with joy that um, they, they've been interested in it. So we're going to do that and we'll try and do some case studies around that as well. That's our focus, so we'll have some information to share as long as we've got the right approvals uh, from the parents, but we'll be able to at least case studies. And um, so the focus with things like gateways is part of brainways right now, but hopefully it'll be something that uh, they'll, they'll love and they'll be able to roll out further. Okay, so we'll do some case studies there and we'll share that um, both through the website and you know through um, the Facebook site and whatever whatever ever means we, we can find. So that'll come. If, so if you send through some info job, I'll keep you in, in touch and maybe connect you on through Facebook and and so forth. Does that help? Is Tara, if you have any um, pamphlets, you know, um, hard copy that you would like included in the gifted resources info pack, I make up about 20 because some people like the hard copy rather than the online. Um, and then I have a, a newsletter which comes out once a month um, and then one before each holiday period where I tell about the holiday programs that are coming up. Um, and I'd love to have, you know, if, if you've got things coming up or if you've got news um, that you'd like included in the, the newsletter, um, I'd love to put that in. Um, if you could email it to me at the email address I gave you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, just uh, I noticed that Peter has asked there in the chat uh, system how many of these uh, robots are used in education at the moment, and uh, a second question, or is it a matter of waiting until next year? Yeah, I, I was just um, popping into the chat uh, for feedback. So there's a school in New Zealand and a school in Australia, one Melbourne school, that has uh, <laughs> invested in rumours. Uh, we just didn't have enough time to get uh, the feedback, so Tara and I were working very hard to try and put the case study in here, but we just didn't have a chance yet, but uh, we'll share that. So two schools are on, on board now. There are three other schools in Melbourne that are part of uh, this group of uh, principals who are very tech, technology focused and investment wise in, in, um, in, in their classrooms. Uh, and in the school, so they're very much, you know, they use the iPhones, and the, the iPods and the iPads and so forth. So there'll be, uh, by April, probably three, three more schools. Um, and in the US, there's actually quite a few schools using them now. As That one school that uh, Tara put the link into, that's uh, one school in the US that's taken them on. But we'll 
more will come through as this year progresses. Yeah, so that's really the main, that is the main takeaway. It's just such early days. So the product just is probably worthwhile knowing. Romo has really only been on the market since last year. They came out of Kickstarter and had the, the current version of the product. Uh, as you know, as of the of the base, as you see it now, which is really um, quite an advanced version. It's you know, it's, it's robust and so forth. And that's so. It's, yeah, uh, it only hit retail US only last year, and um, so this is really what you'd say. This is the year when uh, the, the the robot starts to get some visibility and some tractions, and education is going to be a major focus this year. And just to add on to what Blade said. Um, and I should have said at the beginning, I've only been around for a while. I got mine in June last year when Blade wasn't distributing the New Zealand ones. I've been following their progress and ordered it through from the state. And at that point, it was great that its options were really limited and it wasn't a device I could see being used successfully in education apart from the fact it was a bit of fun. But what the Remotive team have done over the past few months um, since June when I bought mine last year is develop this whole set of missions. So you are doing a lot more with the robot, a lot more with programming and coding. So it will be a while, I think, until um, we have some really good case examples of how they're being used, with the exceptions of the schools that are using them now, simply because they're so new to the market. But I think, as I said, it's exciting time to hear about where they can go. And I know the team at Remotive are very committed to making sure that they've got that sound base for learning contained within them. So, yeah, exciting times ahead. I think so too. And Joe, um, I've taken your point about sending you some handouts and materials. So between Vlad and I, we'll make sure that we've got some information coming your way for you and your community. So individuals can buy these if they wish. And um, I noticed the price is about 200 and something dollars Australian. Uh, does that include the software that will run? Uh, and does the software to control it have to be on a Mac or on a? Uh, oh, it's an app, isn't it? So yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's what they call these days an accessory, and uh, the application is free, and it it loads on both the iPod, which is definitely uh, affordable and, and um, accessible to more people, or an iPhone. There are uh, plugs for both the, the, the fourth generation uh, products, so you know the, the, the larger pin, and the smaller new ones as well. So what we found actually surprisingly is that a lot of people with their old iPhones have given that to kids to play with when they've upgraded. Um, you know, obviously without a SIM card or anything like that, but with the Wi-Fi and all of that, it actually has a lot of uh, interaction uh, of, uh, possibilities other than just playing on it individually, the robot, but controlling externally and, and all that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it's, it definitely becomes uh, accessible and affordable. Oh, I've got a granddaughter who was uh, quite fascinated with uh, robots at um, at Christmas time, and they got some uh, robotic toy Zuma, I think it was. Uh, totally unaware that you could buy this sort of thing. So, yeah, something for grandparents to to splurge on at some stage, I suppose. Uh, and, and when uh, I was saying Tara, which comes on, which came on, um, that anybody that's interested through this uh, this forum to purchase them, all they need to do is just type the core ed. Uh, code uh, in the purchase space, and they'll get an immediate discount. So it's just that's probably still a little bit of marketing, but you know we're focused on education, so we're providing financial support to to a number of uh, to, to your school and to gateways and books offered the same. So. Great. Well, thanks, everyone. Uh, unless there's any questions, I think we'll leave it at that. Joe, we'll make sure you get some information and send it through. Um, thanks very much, everyone, for your attendance. And feel free to contact either Vlad or myself if you go away and have any questions or want to know how either Romo works or a little bit more about robotics and education. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.
guitar and Vlad. Uh, I presume that people are free to uh, to copy those slides you've got, and, uh, and people can also copy the uh, or save the entire chat system as well if you want to. So it's only a matter of going up to the file menu and saving it, and uh, and saving the slides. It's a matter of saving them as PDF slides. Don't save them as a whiteboard slide. Okay, so we'll finish up there. Thanks very much, Vlad and Tara. I'm sorry I missed parts of it. Um, I'll stop the recording now.